But when she found my dad, she texted me. She called me to tell me about my mom. She was so excited. But she texted me to tell me that my father was deceased with a history of violence. Do you think that that's appropriate? As far as I know, in the searcher's circles, no one gives, no, you're not supposed to give news of a deceased anyone via text. That should be an actual call. But because he was black, that negated his whole life. And it, I found it wildly offensive. But when I talked to my mother, she was like, oh, he, should, he shouldn't be dead. She was like, he's really young still. She was like, he shouldn't be dead. And um, she didn't have much to say about him. You know, I, I guess she's feeling some kind of way because he was violent with her. I mean, I suppose understandably so. But I mean, it's my father, you know. Um, so she gave me his name, and that was the most important part. She thought that he was going to marry her. I don't know. How could he marry you? He's already married. Um, so she was in North North Carolina. I think she was in North Carolina. She went back to back home, and she wasn't a child, which I found frustrating. She was like twenty one. Nineteen seventy nine. You can't take care of yourself. Twenty one. You know, or you just didn't want to take care of a black baby. So she went back home and her parents were like, no. And they basically hid her in, in the basement until I was born. Um, she said her mother and her cried over me many times. I'm like, yeah, okay. She didn't remember my birthday. I understand that there is a lot of trauma that comes with carrying a child and then having to give it up. But... She doesn't strike me as the most emotionally mature person in the world, to be fair. I, I don't know what development she's done with herself now. She sent me an email and said she's been working on herself, good for her. But at the time, she didn't strike me as very emotionally mature. She didn't remember my birthday. She like named me something, she was gonna name me something like Shaniqua. I'm like, talk about overcompensating. But anyways. So the most important thing was she gave me my dad's name. The, the woman, the searcher found him, texted me, deceased with the history of violence. Thanks for that. Um, and then she kind of just stopped searching. She was like, okay, here's your mom and dad. But I really wanted to find, uh, so my mom didn't think, we don't, we don't know if he's dead, really, because there's no death, um, there's no obituary. There's no obituary, there's no grave site. Like I searched for his grave site. There's, I, I did so much searching. Like, so we can't really confirm that he's dead. And so I kind of abandoned this searcher because whatever, she's done her job. And um, I ended up encountering an adoptee who helps people search, which is a much, I wish there were more. Just like I wish there were more adoptee therapists I wish there were more adoptees who are passionate about genealogy and want to help other adoptees search. It's just a lot, though, on, on people's plates. And she, the woman helping me search, had a lot on her plate when she was helping me search. But I'm eternally thankful to her. So she was like, oh, all the pieces were here already with the information that the other woman had given you. She, she was like, I had to do relatively little, and she found all these people. She found my brother, um, who had lived a very similar life as my dad, who happened to be in prison, and I found him. Um, and so I reached out to all of these people. Um, they're all related to me, and I don't know how. I had already reached out to the woman that I have a, a DNA connection to, but uh, um, she's my dad's first cousin. And so, you know, an older generation, so they're a little skeptical of, you know, Facebook and random messages and stuff like that. Um, so I ended up finding a cousin who did respond. And so the cousin connect, my first cousin, by the way, the son of my dad's sister. So, um, formed a relationship with this guy. 
very nice guy. And the only reason we're not in contact now is because his mother told me some things that weren't true. And I don't really know why. Really weird stuff. I don't mean like, like maybe you remembered it wrong. I mean, completely incorrect stuff. So it made me very uncomfortable. So I, so she and I had started interacting and she told me a bunch of stuff, wasn't correct stuff. And she's like connected to every, like, it was weird. Like she wanted to like keep me to herself or something. There's like eight or nine siblings. So it, and it did turn out that my father was deceased and she told me um, the wrong thing about how he died. Like he died very violently and she told me something else. I'm like, did you think that I would never find out? She invited me to my cousin's birthday party and she never talks to my sister. And she like secretly invited my sister. Like she was trying to like surprise. This is just, I don't know. It, probably somewhere in her head that seemed like it was okay, but it really for me was not okay when I found out all this stuff. Um, they're in Ohio and uh, it was just too much for me to make it. I was gonna try, but it was just too much. So she has a son and a daughter and I connected with her son and her daughter you know, it's all right, whatever, they're nice. Again, at this time, it's a lot of connection. I'm still in con contact with my mother at this time, and it's a lot of people for somebody who's been alone. So I've got a, uh, two cousins I'm interacting with, a brother, a mom. Now, a two, co two cousins on my mom's side, on my mom's side, two cousins, her sister, her, and a brother that I'm interacting with on her side. And now I've found a two cousins and an aunt on my father's side. So it's a lot of interaction for somebody who's been alone since they're 14. Very overloaded. I started to get sick. I got uh, ringworms and I've never heard of a ring ringworm outbreak. Like I had ringworms all over my body and I couldn't get rid of them. It was horrible. Like I would have to like um, slather myself in dandruff shampoo trying to get rid of the ringworms and I, I had made an adoptee friend who was also in reunion who said that she went to the hospital from overload when she was in reunion, when she first went into reunion. So my body was just like, <laughs> um, <laughs> so my, so I really wanted to talk to my sister. So my dad has passed and I'm really frustrated about I'm never gonna get to meet my dad. Um, never gonna get to see his face or hear his voice. No one has any video. It still really frustrates me. It still really frustrates me. Um, <laughs> um, so my aunt had had contact with my and so my cousin's like oh I don't know who your your sister is but he did and and then after she's found I'm like she's mad about that because there's like all these rifts in the family it's a huge family and there's oh, all this infighting which is just too much for me so the way that I found my sister was my aunt finally uh gave me my uncle my so he's the oldest brother living brother i think he's the oldest brother anyways and um so gave me uh my uncle's phone number and didn't call him first so my uncle's quite you know quite a bit older he was older than my dad so he's quite a bit older and you know there's prank calls and you don't know who's calling you she didn't call him and tell him that I was gonna call or anything she just gave me his number and I called him and it was just a really horrible interaction and he was just kind of very dismissive and um, he was like yeah okay give me your number and 
Uh, it was horrible. It's horrible. It was a horrible interaction. And I was just like, why would you do that? I don't know. She's just, everybody's got their trauma, right? It just felt very mean spirited. Like she was just trying to like puppeteer the situation, trying to control everything. Like, ma'am, I'm trying to find my, my sister. Um, so she was in you know, all these people in contact with me. And then, um, so she called my uncle cause I was very upset with her. She called my uncle and then my uncle called me back and he said, can you send me some pictures? And he was like, Oh, you're definitely one of ours. I don't see it. I don't see it with my dad. I don't see it with my brothers and sisters. I don't see it with my aunts and uncles. I don't, I don't see it, but he did, and I was thankful for that. And um, so he has a daughter. I talked with her daughter, and her daughter, his daughter, connected me to my sister. He he and his wife actually raised my sister. So I have a um, sister and a brother, and we're all what are they called? Irish triplets. So we're all the same age, just like a couple of months apart. Um, but he raised my sister. I'm not sure who raised my brother. We all have different mothers. And then we have a little brother who's 20 something. And apparently we have an older brother who um, is from the Philippines because my dad fell in love with a woman in the Philippines. So got connected to my sister and um, she is very uh, family oriented, warm, and open, nothing like me, um, but she finds a lot of ways that we are alike. And we just talked every day for hours about, once we've, once we've shared the story, just sometimes about nothing. And it was very overwhelming. She shared the story with me about my, my bio father, about how he died and uh, why I couldn't find his obituary. He always told her uh, he didn't want an obituary and he's not buried. He's cremated and his ashes are in her basement. He died um, because he was smoking something that was oil based and the pipe blew up and burned 90% of his body. He was on life support for a while and eventually died. And, uh, she was the executor of his estate and wasn't just there just wasn't much of faith to be honest um and that was kind of it for me um and that's kind of for me where it ends because um so my brother was like I said was in prison I'm like and he kept calling me from prison I'm like I don't want to talk to you while you're in prison I'm like Oh, why won't she answer the phone? I'm like, cause you're in prison. Like he wanted me to like do all this stuff and spend all this money. But then when he got out of prison, we don't have anything to say to each other then. Cause I kept trying to call him when he got out of prison. And we'll... anyway, disappointing to say the least. My sister, um, you know, I'm not a perfect person, but as I move through my healing journey, there are some things that I know about myself that I have to uphold. And uh, she, um, you know, they're small town folks, um, church, very Christian. And for me, um, if you're gonna be Christian, that's fine, but don't be a hypocrite. She had some things going on in her life that didn't feel very Christian to me. Um, I told her I didn't want to know about it. She kept telling me. Um, I don't, I didn't enjoy the way she interacts with her children. It's her business, but it didn't feel good or right to me. And it feels like those kids are probably going to come out of that with a whole lot of trauma themselves. And so there's just a lot of stuff about the, the situation that just didn't feel good. 
And so I sent her a long message and I was just like, you know, I, I explained everything and I just need some time and some space. And I did a video, the unintended consequences of reunion and she was devastated. And I'm super sorry about that. But I had to take a step back to take care of me. We're still in contact. Um, we talk sometimes. She's on my Facebook. And I actually have, um, she gave me for my birthday, a blanket that has a letter to my sister on it. And it's actually here on my bed in Dubai. I take it with me everywhere I go. I feel deeply connected to her. But I, at the same breath, she's a stranger and a very different version of and we're not each you know we're not the same person and a, a stranger so and not living similar lives at all um my mother and brother had blocked me my mother sent me an email um when I came overseas, she sent me an email to my YouTube channel email um, saying that she knew that I could never forgive her, that she had been doing a lot of work and she sees things differently. And I am I was never mad at her for giving me a freedom. Well, once I started doing the, the healing work. As a younger person, when I got found out I was adopted, I was very angry that I was given up. But as as I've matured and gotten older, I'm not mad at her. I understand uh, the pain and trauma that goes with giving up a child. I'm not mad that she gave me up for adoption. She certainly wasn't equipped to raise me. And I'm glad that she didn't raise me or her family. Who knows how I would have ended up because her son spent seven years in prison. I just, again, emotionally immature. I just feel like she wasn't equipped to raise me. Um, so I'm not mad at her for giving me up for adoption. What I'm mad about is the racism, and that's the stuff you need to attend to. I don't talk to her um, sister and uh, her kids anymore because I told them as well, um, you need to work out all this um, white black stuff. You need to figure out what it looks like to be an advocate and apply that to your life before we can have a relationship. And I let them stay on Facebook for about a year. And constantly, like, I'm like, chill out or you're gonna get pushed out of my life. And after a while, it just, it just became so much. And I gave them a year. I didn't see any progress. And I was just like, you know, I sent all of them a voice note. I was like, I'm really sorry for the pain that this has caused you but I cannot do this with you. I don't see any growth, I don't see any progress. I can't, I can't do this with you. So I um, ended things with them. I blocked them and my cousin commented on one of my YouTube videos and we talked again and she went off Oh, I'm bipolar and don't you feel bad and I thought you were the missing piece. I'm not your savior. Oh, I didn't say you were. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, but I don't owe you anything though. I don't. I don't owe you anything. You lied and blah, blah, blah. And, and, and I do feel bad that uh, searchers tell, tell people to lie. I don't think it's right to come into a situation um, being in inauthentic because you carry those words forever if you have relationship with these people. So I do think we should be more honest about what's going on when we make connections with these people. Because I said I was just looking for health information, but really I was looking for my father's name so I could find my dad's family. She's like, oh, you're racist, blah, 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 blah. And are you, are you, why don't you want your white family? I'm like, oh, I've already had a white family. And I'm sorry for her pain, but I'm not sorry for my decision and, and for my stance and my position and all this stuff. Where am I now in all of this? My youngest brother was also very upset. He thought that I was going to actively be a part of his life, so he, um, con he disconnected from me. Uh, my other brother, um, I've not talked to him at all since he's been out of prison. Um, and we don't know where my brother from the Philippines is. 
I have not reconnected with my mother and I don't think I ever will. I don't really have any interest in my brother on her side at all. Um, I really want to go see my dad's brother. Uh, the problem with that is that he lives in the town with my entire family. And I don't know that I really want to engage all the rest. I really just want to talk with him about my dad. But because he lives there in the town with the rest of my family, I can't just go there and just see him. <sighs> that makes me sad. I did talk to another uncle, like I said, it's a big family and he, uh, who has a lot of our genealogy information and he was horrible to me. Oh, I don't believe that DNA stuff and I'm not doing it. How am I supposed to know it? Here, and, and tell me some about yourself. He was just horrible. And I was just like sobbing on the phone and like we're all on three way and like nobody cares. Yeah, I don't really have a desire to put myself through that again. Um, his cousin that I have DNA connection with she and I are friends on Facebook, but she was never connected to my dad either because he was always an outsider. So, you know, that's where I am in my reunion journey. I'm still connected to my sister. I am uh, Facebook friends with my uncle's wife. Uh, my uncle, you know, they're older. They don't really do all that stuff. Really, really want to go see him before it's too late. But the idea of going to the United States just doesn't, I mean, and especially going to like such an obscure part of the United States doesn't gel with me, but I probably should do it before it's too late. And that's where I stand in my reunion journey that I didn't get to share on who am I really. And I just feel like um, adoptees want to know, I've encountered some adoptees and they're like, I've looked for your, you know, when you met your mom and I can't find that on your channel. So here you go. Here's the full story. Um, the best I remember it. I did need to get it on video before I started forgetting it all because I, I have lost pieces here and there. So as always, my name is Kamina the coach. This is my reunion story. And as always, I am sending you love light, peace, and joy. Until next time, my name is Kamina the Coach and I'm out. Bye.